As you have heard, my name is Geoffrey Kerosi from Haki Jami. Um, I'm a program officer at Haki Jami. And I will generally uh, talk about a few areas. I will discuss about, I will give a general background so that those who are not conversant with the housing sector, uh, we can be on the same page. Then I will talk about uh, the, the impact of housing on trade, where I will look at the housing bonds, the mortgage industry. Uh, I will talk about the impact of this housing uh, agenda on trade for construction materials. And then finally, I will look at the trading for services. So basically, <coughs> Just some background on housing. We, the president and his team are planning to deliver 500,000 units of housing by the year 2022. And uh, initially, actually, it was 1 million housing units. If you look at the original documents on the housing agenda, you will see that they were looking at 1 million housing units. But after some discussions, they reduced it to 500,000 units. So the government plans to finance these housing units as follows. There will be some 10% contribution from the state. There will be a 30% contribution from the National Social Security Fund, NSSF, and then 60% from the private sector. And these housing, housing units will be constructed on 7,000 acres uh, in major towns of Nairobi, Mombasa, <coughs> Kisumu, Eldoret, and Nakuru. And as you know, if you have been working in the housing sector, there is a lot of work which is going on. In Mombasa, they, they have the Urban Renewal and Regeneration Program, where they want to replace those old buildings, which is a danger to lives of people in Mombasa. In Nairobi, there are a lot of uh, discussions going on, although not much has really taken place. So uh, on this presentation, I will basically focus on social and affordable housing. Although in Kenya, our definition of social and affordable housing is not very clear. Uh, in Kenya, the government looks at social and affordable housing from the aspect of income. They say if you are earning up to a certain amount, you will have access to affordable housing. Then if you are earning uh, up to a certain amount, then you will get affordable housing. Uh, affordable and then there is social housing. We do not have a, uh, a clear definition of those two concepts. So basically, the mortgage industry in Kenya is, is quite small. Uh, it is pegged around, uh, Central Bank approximates that by 2015, the mortgage debt in Kenya was 3.15% of the gross domestic product or the GDP. It is quite small. And some of the challenges the Central Bank of Kenya identified, which is facing the mortgage industry, uh, is uh, the low income levels of many people in the country, high cost of houses, the high in standard costs, there is high interest rates on mortgages, there is lack of access to long term finance. Yes, today you might want to have a mortgage, but that access to that mortgage is not there in many cases. Then there is finally the difficulties in registration as well as titling of property. To register your piece of land which you have acquired in this country, it has been discovered to be a big challenge. Now, the government, as I mentioned above, they want to deliver 500,000 units of housing. Uh, already we, they started from around 2017, late 2017. Now we have 45 months remaining, assuming it will be up to December 2022. How many houses have we done so far? Because we are in 2018 and the time is moving so fast. Are we really going to achieve these housing units? Also even looking at the financing of the uh, housing uh, agenda. If you look at the budget, the current budget for 2018-2019, you will see that 
the government only con uh, has allocated 8 billion and most of that money is going into constructing housing units for the police or the armed forces. So are we going really to deliver on these uh, 500,000 units of housing by 2022? And also considering that there is a lot of politics, we are doing more politics than development. <laughs> Those are my opinions. Uh, now, I just want to, I hope it is, is it clear, really? Uh, in 2016, 2017, the approved expenditure for housing was 17.5 billion. The actual expenditure was 16.5 billion. So the absorption rate was 94.3%. Uh, percent. Nairobi, at the regional level, Nairobi uh, had approved a value of building plans which decreased from 308 million to 240 million in 2017. So there is a trend. Before we adopted the big four housing as a big four agenda, investments in housing were dropping. You can see f the plans which were approved in Nairobi had dropped from 308 million in 2016 to 240 million in 2017. That is the same observation we see at the national level. If you look at the national, uh, there is the National Housing Corporation, which had uh, invested 3.8 billion in 2016, but the amount reduced to 2.3 billion in 2017. So there is a trend. The investments in the housing sector had been going down until when the president came up with the big four agenda on housing. And th that, that information, you can get it in the economic survey of 2018. If you check on page 174, you can see uh, a lot of information there. And uh, this is, uh, if you can be able to see it, it shows the uh, reported private and public building completed in 2013 all the way to 2017. And if you look at the first, the, the first column shows the year, the second column shows the private, that is in Nairobi City County, and the last column shows public or um, buildings generally done by the government. Uh, you can see that a lot of buildings before we adopted the PIG4 agenda were being done by the private sector. Uh, for example, in uh, 2013, there were 6,000 houses which were built in Nairobi. Uh, but in 2017, there is uh, 11,000. So they were increasing, if you can see. Then in uh, the public buildings, there were 376 in 2013. They increased the, all the way to 1,164 public buildings in uh, 2017. Uh, and that figure for 2017 is uh, uh, provisional, meaning it had not been uh, uh, confirmed. So this is just to paint a picture of what is happening in the housing sector and what then I will go into the findings on wh what impact will this have on trade, the big four agenda. So I've, I will go direct to the results from my findings. Uh, number one, and uh, one of the things which I think is the biggest impact, one of the biggest impact on, uh, of housing on the big four, on, on trade, is uh, on the financial markets. As you saw from the beginning, I mentioned that the government will only contribute 10%, NSSF uh, 30%, and, and then 60% from private sector. So you can see the huge chunk of money will come from the private sector. And where would the private firms, where would the individuals get the money to finance housing? Number one will be the housing bonds. Uh, and in this, some researcher has mentioned that housing bonds, uh, is a, you see these are one of the ways of raising money from the financial markets. And this is not something new in Kenya, uh, because for example, Kenya provides a, a good example of how financial institutions and property developers can raise funds through 
housing bonds. A, a good example is Shelter Africa. I don't know if this, that's Africa, but that's <laughs> the Nairobi based Pan African Housing Finance Institution uh, had successfully issued five housing bonds between 20, 2005 and 2014 with amounts falling from 500 million to 5 billion. So they successfully raised that money. Uh, the tenors of these issues ranged between three and five years, with carbon rates between 12.5 and 12.75. Kenya's favorable regulatory environment has precipitated the growth of this asset class. So generally, you will see that the, the, the financial markets issuance of housing bonds is going to grow because now the private sector has to contribute the 60% to the housing finance to provide those 500,000 units of housing. Uh, further, the Capital Markets Authority has a mandate to regulate issuance of capital market uh, products such as shares and bonds. So since the private sector is expected to raise that 60%, actually which I have already said, uh, you can see opportunities there. And as you know, uh, housing bonds can be bought by anyone. It is like buying shares. Uh, just by following the set out rules and when they have floated those bonds, everyone will get a chance to purchase the bonds and then uh, you will be part of this game of housing. However, not all companies have been successive in raising uh, finances from uh, bonds. For example, the, in 2014, Home Africa, a property development company listed here in Nairobi, Stock, uh, Nairobi Securities Exchange, was forced to resort to more expensive commercial loans uh, after this bond issue failed to raise 500 million shillings. Based on the past success stories by firms we have mentioned above, we cannot blame liquidity in the market. Therefore, the challenges of Home Africa at that time laid elsewhere. For example, maybe declining pro uh, profitability and weak performance. So as uh, prospective investors, people and companies will have to look at the companies which are floating the bonds. That is the housing bonds. Uh, look at their performance, look at their balance sheets, so that you can be able to know which bonds you can purchase in the market. Uh, another thing uh, which I can foresee going forward is that cooperative uh, societies, the circles, will, be, will play a central role in uh, ensuring that the Big Four agenda on housing is uh, achieved. Because in Kenya we are doing very well in terms of circles. Uh, the SACO sector is the largest in Africa, according, it's, it's one of the largest in Africa, according to the World Organization of Credit Unions. Uh, uh, from a report which was published in 2014, uh, Kenyan SACOs were ranked on number 11. So you can see that is uh, actually we have been arguing that the SACOs should be given uh, a bigger role to play in terms of access to housing units. Uh, access to financing to purchase those houses. Even when uh, we, we were participating on the national government housing regulations, we proposed, but it was never taken, that those circles which are providing housing units, they should have been given a bigger responsibility because they are already members who are in the circles who are accessing uh, finances. But those circles do not have a place where to get finances to give to the people as loans and uh, other methods. So now let us look at the mortgage industry. Uh, as I mentioned, Kenya's mortgage industry is not very huge. But in 2018, as you can remember, those who have been following closely, the National Treasury and the World Bank formed the Kenya Mortgage Refinancing Facility. Uh, as I was trying to do my research, I discovered that as much as this facility was formed, uh, not much has been going on unless there is something which is not in the public domain. So this uh, initiative would be providing uh, funding 
for those uh, mortgage, uh, mortgage lenders, thereby they will increase the affordability and affordability of mortgage loans to Kenyans. Uh, that's according to the cabinet secretary, Henry Rotich. Now, I looked at, uh, later on I will give you some of the success stories on how we can use the Kenya Mortgage Refinancing Company, which is, a, I think, a private limited company owned by uh, a few investors, I guess, uh, how we can use it to get enough funding for the circles, for the banks and many other people. Now, another opportunity is trade on construction materials. Obviously, because this is a government policy, for if the government provides the 500,000 units, then automatically there will be a spike in demand for housing construction materials, for example, cement, uh, there will be demand for building blocks and many other, even paints and those kind of uh, materials. So for those who uh, are doing trade on housing materials, there will be a huge demand going forward. Uh, the other one is on trading on services in construction, uh, uh, construction of houses. We know there will be a high demand for engineers, there will be a high demand for architects, uh, quantity surveyors, uh, up and pranas, prambas, and, and those other trade, uh, trades. Now, some case study so that we, we can get some successive story. Nigeria as the Nigeria Mortgage Refinancing Company. Uh, this was launched in January 2014. It received the initial loan of 250 million from World Bank Group and the International Development Association. And the shareholders are the Nigerian government, the Nigerian Sovereign Wealth Fund, and IFC, among others. So this is something which has already worked. They have raised funding, and that funding is being given to the mortgage lenders. Uh, there is also some successive program, which was done between 1965 and 1974 in Sweden. Uh, they constructed over one million housing units. There are a lot of lessons we can learn from those people, uh, and, and I know this presentation will be shared with you. Uh, I compared what was done in Sweden in, in those times, 1965 to 64, to 74, sorry, and what we are doing here in Kenya, and some of the challenges which they faced, which we can be able to overcome. Uh, so, in conclusion, Kenya Mortgage Financing Company can be used as a vehicle to achieve standardization in mortgage market in Kenya by calling upon 47 counties to reduce land rates and fast track approval of housing plans. I know the Institute of Economic Affairs produced another report which showed that for you to get your building plan approved in some of these big towns in Kenya or counties, you have to part with something. You have to give a bribe for you to get those things approved. So if we can streamline those kind of things, then we will be sure of achieving the 500,000 units of uh, housing. So my recommendation is to the National Treasury, they should fast track and ensure that the mortgage liqu uh, liquidity facilities, MRF, is working efficiently. Since this is a company, I was expecting that when I was doing my research, I should even find a website where they are saying even what they are doing, how many people they have served so far. Because it looks like in the housing sector, it is like we are preparing to start uh, implementing the Big Four agenda that is on housing because uh, not much is going on at the scale which we expect if we are to deliver 500,000 units. Lastly, uh, I will mention that government agencies and stakeholders in the housing sector should conduct analysis which measure the cost effectiveness of government interventions in the housing sector. For example, the providing of subsidies. If you look carefully, you will see that the subsidies in Kenya or incentives in Kenya are from the supply side. The companies are the ones who are being given subsidies. Uh, but the people who will purchase these houses, they, they have no subsidies at all. In Sweden, when they were doing this thing, they provided 60%. They subsidized the houses for the poor. At least 66% was paid by government. In Kenya, we are subsidizing for companies only. That is something I think was overlooked. Then, Stakeholders in the housing sector should conduct an empirical study to determine the exact impact of uh, 
uh, of housing on trade uh, by collecting information from the relevant stakeholders. And finally, there is some, some danger which is facing this uh, housing uh, agenda, which is the pending bills by county governments. Uh, because if you have supplied services, for example, if county hires you to construct houses, then if they don't pay you in time, uh, there, there is a negative impact on that because you might run out of business. And if that happens, which is already happening, I know several uh, contractors who have never been paid for several years, uh, then it means we can never achieve the Big Four agenda. Uh, so thank you very much. For more details, you look at this report.